Hey guys, let's mic a kick drum. All right, inside this kick drum, which is a Yamaha 22 by 16 inch stage custom, uh, I have a D112 by AKG. That's the mic that's inside. And I have it about halfway in, and it's kind of pointed at the shell, in between the shell and the beater, trying to get the best of both worlds. Not too close to the beater, so it's too clicky. Not too far out, so it's not getting too much room. It's still isolated. The second mic I have is the Yamaha Subkick, which is a microphone that picks up under 100 hertz. So I have that close to the kick drum to get some proximity, and I also have it so it's in the center of the kick drum where I feel like you get the most tone. So in combination of those two mics, you can really get a, a kick drum with a lot of attack and some nice body. Okay guys, now that we're in Logic, we could go over some of the processing that we used on the kick, and it's pretty minimal, so let's just hear the whole kick with the whole kit. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is I like to make sure that the overheads are in phase with each other. So I have one overhead over the ride, one overhead over the hi-hats. So I'm just going to open up a plug-in here to uh, do a little um, phase alignment. So let's play the track and see what we get. Okay, so now that these overheads are in phase with each other, we can make sure that the kick in and the kick out are in phase with the overheads. So let's start with the kick in. I flip the polarity okay so when I flip the polarity we lost a lot of low end and body so that means that this mic is in phase with the overheads so we're not gonna flip this let's try with the sub kick okay this is flipped out it's very thin now all the low end comes back, so this was also in phase. And I did have the kick in mic on as well to make sure that these were working together. So it seems like it sounds best when we leave the polarity switches alone. So now we could talk about a little bit of compression here. Um, here is the kick out and without compression and with. Yeah, so it just it just tightens up the low end a little bit in terms of body. It kind of keeps the body of the of the low end consistent. So we'll leave that in the sub kick. And here we just have a little 1073 preamp and EQ. We're not really doing anything to this sub kick. Now on the kick in mic, we're not doing any compression right now. And we have a little bit of EQ, just like a 6 dB, almost 7 dB bump. Uh, at 15k on the on the high end and then we have a little bump at 60 so we'll hear it with the EQ and without here's without with yeah so basically we just get a little bit more snap in the top and a little bit more booty on the bottom so nice little a subtle EQ move um, you could, you know, if you really want to get a lot of click, you could, uh, you could dime this knob and it'll sound great. Um, and now we could talk a little bit about compression on the, on the kick in mic.
and without. And with. Yeah, same kind of thing. Just giving us a little bit more low end. Um, if you play with this release time and make it slower, you get more sustain. I feel like the release knob should just be called a sustain knob because that's really what it does. Yeah, it's pretty subtle, but the release knob, if you make it a little longer, you'll get more sustain. The only thing is you can't go too long, otherwise it's not going to recover in time for the next hit. So you kind of want to use the tempo of the, of the track to set that. So I'm just making sure the needle goes to zero on the meter. But, you know, you can look at the meters, but you just have to use your ears and just make it feel good and make it sound the way you want. So this is just a sustain. And attack, this just controls um, how, much, uh, how much snap we're going to have. So because this is slow, we're really letting the snap come through. If we, if we brought this all the way down, it would make... We'd, we'd have a lot more control over the level, but it would kind of be squashing down the attack. I'll just show you what it sounds like anyway. Yes, yeah, so you just get a little bit more snap on the kick when you have a, a slower attack. And you could just set this by ear as well. So the only thing we can do now, um, well, one of the things we can do is we could talk about... Um, Adding in some room mics, we might get some more body. So I'm going to bring in the room mics and see what that sounds like. Yeah, so we're getting a little more like low mids and high mids. Uh, if we want it to be a little cleaner, we'll just bring this down. Somewhere around there is a good balance, I feel. So it's all about how you want to set it, but in terms of processing kick drums and micing them up, it's really not that hard. Um, there's a million ways to do it, so you just got to find one that works for you. All right, take it easy.